For the final trick in SOPs, which is a really neat one, let's again drop down a pig head and dive in there. Let's not add a shader to this, but subdivide it again. Set our subdivision again to a depth of two. And then, like previously, let's set up a group, which again, I'll just call GRP. Set this to be a point group. And again, group it using a bounding sphere, which again, I'm gonna restrict to that point on the ear or that area on the ear up there. So that's my kind of starting group. So we've been talking about this expansion of groups and there is another SOP level node that's part of the Pyro toolkit that's been rebuilt and which we're gonna talk about in another video that can be abused to build basically what we did with a few lines of VEX previously, that is growth. Growth which has been limited or driven by a few attributes. In our case, for our starting points, we want to set their attribute so that they can actually contain or start a growth. Let's have a look at the pyro node I'm talking about first, which is the pyro source spread here. And this it takes in points which have a few parameters. Namely, it uses a temperature parameter to model burn that propagates over a surface. Why this in here? Leave a bit of space. And in order for this pyro spread to work, let's visualize the burn, there is none on the surface. So to start something burning, we need high temperature which we also do not have on the surface. So let's create something. Let's use the attrib create, limit it to a point group called GRP. That's the one we created up here. Why are this in here? And let's create a temperature attribute with a default value of zero. However, just for our points group GRP, let's set this value to one like so. And why are this in here? So we now see in the pyro source spread, we are visualizing our temperature here, which is higher than the rest. So if we visualize burn now, this area immediately starts to burn. And if we hit play, well, nothing really happens. And that is because we need to dial in a few parameters here. First, I'm gonna decrease my cooling rate so this temperature stays a bit higher, has a bit more chance to propagate and ignite stuff, actually. And you can see now we're slowly propagating through this mesh here. Which is kind of cool. However, it can be a bit boring, like this. And the main parameter is driving this propagation over the surface. Other parameters found in the diffusion tab here, in the temperature change tab. So let's dive in here and visualize the diffusion actually. So this is the diffusion speed, if you want so the spread speed that we have. And this is initially driven by a noise. And instead of this simplex, this Perlin noise, let's maybe set this to a Manhattan Whirly, like so. I'm gonna dial back the element size a bit. So we're getting a bit more intricate noise here. And in the ramp here, Let's not allow this to go to zero, but have a minimal value of 0 0.1. So these points will also be able to be on fire. That means infected, that means will be part of this spreading burn value. Again, let's visualize burn. So that is now neatly propagating through my mesh, slowing down in certain areas while being a bit quicker in others. Let's reset this. And in the fuel tab, we can actually disable the injection noise for fuel. Because again, the spread of this is mostly driven or mainly driven or exclusively driven by this diffusion rate that we dial in here. Again, let's simulate this. And yeah, I kind of like this. So what can you do with this? Uh, maybe emit particles, maybe actually use this to start a fire on something to drive where the object is burning and where it isn't. Or maybe just make an object appear using that attribute, that burn attribute, by piping it into a shader, which then drives the opacity of that shader or just to be blunt, delete the areas of our mesh with a certain burn value beyond a certain threshold. So when we go to our geo spreadsheet up here, we can see we have a burn value, which is between zero or one, depending if parts are burning or not. And we have also a total burn value. So that's kind of how many frames this thing is burning. And in my case, I just wanna delete points and I wanna delete them by an expression and I want to delete any points that have a total burn value that is below 1.0. So now I'm having this geometry appear using that propagating spread through the geometry. So really easy growth on a surface. All right, those were the five, six neat things that I found in the SOP context of H18. Some of them by themselves do not look that spectacular. However, all of those nodes are really, really useful in your daily work, especially the sweep, the bevel, and the group expand. So I'm really excited to have those tools available at my fingertips now. And also, as you can see, some of those other tools can be abused to create quite amazing effects that previously required knowledge of VEX, which can now be slammed together using only SOP nodes exclusively, like the last propagation setup I've shown you here. But there have also been a few other additions to SOPs in Houdini 18, a few important ones, which we're going to talk about in the next video.